dear students i am going to start engineering mathematics for gate entrance examinations iit jam and ug examinations like b and b tech if we'll go through the syllabus of gate you can see engineering mathematics is most common topic for all the branches if we'll go in details of it you can say calculus is the most important topic which is being asked in every branch of the baking gate examination i will share the syllabus for you here you can see the calculus itself is divided into three parts function of single variable function of two variables third is seconds and series first we'll start with the function of single variables the same concept will be brought back to function of multi variables multi variables especially here we have to study about two variable problems so first is limit continuity and differentiability for function of single variables before starting this limit continuity and differentiability i would like to go through some basics about set what are the operations defined on a set what is the relation what is function what is domain co domain and range for a function then we'll come to limit what is set i think everyone might have studied in their 10th standard what is set a well defined collection of distinct objects is called as set and these distinct objects are called as element of that set here we are using well defined because there should be some pattern on the objects and these objects are called as elements and repetition is not allowed that's why we are using distinct objects for example if we we'll go through the examples of numbers from number theory you will see then you can say the best example is natural numbers like 1 2 3 then you can say whole numbers whole numbers just include zero in naturals it becomes whole number 1 2 3 then comes negative num numbers just include negative to whole it will become integers so integer is like minus infinity minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 2 infinity then we can say rationals like it is of the type p by q such that p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0 then comes irrational number then comes real numbers then complex numbers these are the well known examples from set theory now i'll briefly go through operations defined on a set so if you'll recall i think you might be knowing what is union what is intersection what is set difference means like uh, a minus b what is complement of a set what is cross product like a cross b especially we'll use this in our next study so <coughs> i'll explain what is a cross b let us say for example i have taken something like a is equal to 1 2 3 and something b is equal to you can take say some different type of numbers you can say like a b c d let us say so, so what is a cross b so if you'll recall you will say a cross b is defined as the collection of ordered pairs a comma b such that a belongs to capital a and b belongs to capital a. so if you'll see this definition of cross product you can easily compute a cross b for our examples so if i collect it so just take one from a and then make a pair from second set so you can say 1 comma a similarly 1 comma b 1 comma c 1 comma d dot 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 
similarly you can start with 2 comma a 2 comma b and you will end up with 3 comma c 3 comma d this is your a cross b if i'll ask you how many elements are there in a cross b like a is having you can see here your a is having three elements your b is having four elements so how many elements will be there in a cross b so how many elements will be there in a cross b it used to it used to represent this like this this is called cardinality so how many elements will be there in a cross b three cross four so total 12 elements will be there in a plus b so this is some thing some briefing about set and operations on it now i'll come to the relation what is the relation for relation you need two sets especially two non empty sets why you are saying non empty means at least some elements should be there at least one element should be there in the set both the sets so here you have taken a and b as two non empty sets then a relation from a to b actually here we are going to define a relation from set a to b we are going to define a relation from set a to b is collection of ordered pairs of type a comma b where a is from set a and b is from set b so if we we'll take the same example where a is 1, 2, 3 and your B was like A, B, C, B. So by this definition, you can see if I just collected some ordered pairs A comma B, let us say I have just taken 1 comma A and 2 comma B, let us say 3 comma D. So this collection, because as per your definition, what is this? This is just collection of ordered pairs of A comma B type. So this will be some relation. Let us say it is R1. Similarly, some R2 you can define as like 2 comma C, 2 comma D. Simply just pick. This is also a relation. So like this, you can say there will be so many examples of relations from set A to B. Now question comes, how many relations can be defined? So you see, what you are doing here? Whatever you had defined A cross B previously, from that only you are just making some collection here. So how many collections can be made here? Those That will be your number. If somebody is asking how many relations can be defined from A to B, if a is having three elements, B is having four elements. Like okay, in mathematics you can write like A is equal to three, cardinal D of B is equal to four. Then how many relations? So first of all, we have to say A cross B will have some total elements. Out of this total, you have to just make subsets of it. You just you have to make some collection of other pairs. Those will come from this A cross B. So how many? So if you remember, the formula is 2 to the power n. If a set is having n elements, then how many subsets can be found? That is 2 to the power n. So total number of relations will be total number of relations will be 2 to the power n. So for this example, if somebody asks from a to b how many relations can be defined so it will be 2 to the power 12 this is your answer now in relations also if we'll go in details just i'll take some names of it what are the relations what are the type of relations reflexive symmetric transitive then comes equivalence relations so you just you can go through details of your 10th standard in mathematics you will see anyway. now we'll come to the function what is function let x and y are two non-empty sets then a relation from x to y is called as function see we are seeing a relation from x to y is called as a function from x to y if 
every element of x is related to a unique element of y. So simply you have to just take care of these lines. Every element of x is related to a unique element of y. For example, if we'll take the same example, what is there? Actually, you have one, two, three in your A. And your B is having some four elements. Let us say A, B, C, D. This is your B. So in the relations, just now we saw whatever other pairs are possible, those collections will be a relation. But here you have to impose some condition. What is that condition? Every element of X means first set is related to unique element of second set. So let us say, I'm going to say one is related to A, for example, two is related to B, and let us say three is related to C. Then this can be represented like one comma A, two comma B, and three comma C. So whether this relation is function, then just see this. What it says, every element of x, so here x means first set. So every element of x means first set should be related to a unique element of y. So you can say here, one is related to a unique element a, two is related to a unique element b, and three is related to a unique element c. So our definition of function is satisfied here. So you can say this relation is a function. But if I'll take one relation, let us say R1, like this, one comma A, one comma B, two comma D, and three comma C. Let us say I have taken this. So here, if you'll see one, two, and three, means for first set, all the elements are related to elements from B. But unique element of Y, you see this, it is saying it should be unique. But you can see here, one is related to A and one is related to again B. Means one is related to A and then one is related to A and one is related to B. So here uniqueness fails. So this relation R1 is a function? No, this is not a function. Similarly, if we'll say if I have taken R2 as 2 comma B, 3 comma C, let us say. So here, again, this is a relation definitely because this is just collection of order pairs from A to B. But whether this is a function? No, because here we don't have any relation of element 1 from first set because in this relation R2, 1 is not related. If it is related, then we have to think of uniqueness. So just if we'll include here one comma D or something, so it will become a function, but this is not a function. So you can say every function will be a relation, but every relation need not to be a function because some relations out of this, you, you can see only first one was your function. That relation was a function. So this is just definition of a function. For example, like you have just, you might have seen y is equal to fx, fx defined as something, let us say I have taken y is equal to 2x plus 1. So y is equal to 2x plus 1, we say this is a function, how and why. First, you should know from which set to which set it is defined. Generally, when we say y is equal to fx, it used to be from set of real numbers to set of real numbers. So f from r to r means first set is a real, second is also set of real numbers. So if we have to justify that this is a function or not, so how you can say, first thing is, from first set, every element should be related to second set. So if we'll take any real number here, 
let us say I have taken five, four, six, or something, whatever. Let us say I have taken five. So five should be related to some elements from second set. So you can say how much it will be? Five into two plus one, eleven. So you can say five will be related to eleven. Whether five is related to some other element also, because you have to think of uniqueness also. No, because if we put five here, you will get only eleven. So you can say y is equal to fx is a function. So whenever you get a function, you just think of what is set A and what is set B. Now I'll briefly go through what is domain, what is domain, codomain, and range of a function. Domain is what the first set. The first set is called as domain. Codomain, the second set is called as codomain. What is range? What is range? Range is the elements from second set or set Y which are mapped, which are mapping for some elements from X. Means here, if you take this example, 1 comma a, 2 comma b, and 3 comma c. Here, this is a function because r2 and r1 and r2 are not a function, so we can't think of domain, codomain, and range further. So here, if we take this example, so you are clear about domain and codomain because domain means first set, codomain means second set. Only thing is we have to think of range. What is range for 3 comma c? sorry this function r here you can see a b c d your codomain is fully a b c d but d is not mapped to any of actually b is not a mapping of any element from a so this is actually left over so range will be only a comma b comma c so for this function range will be a comma b comma c if we will consider this r3 r3 is just r2 and 1 comma d you add like it will be 2 comma b 3 comma c and 1 comma d so this is a function r3 what is range of it so range is b c and d because in this r3 there is uh, a which is left over there is no element in a which is mapped to a okay so r3 what is the range of r3 b comma c comma d so this is some briefing about functions about domain codomain and range here um, question i have given find the domain for fx is equal to so i'll just explain here briefly and you can find it out what is the domain for fx. The first thing is under root function. See, you might be knowing if something is under root fx type of things like let us say under root x. So you might have studied under root under root is a function which is defined for non-negative numbers. Non-negative means whatever is inside like fx or x or x. Here it is minus x plus 2. That should be non-negative. Non-negative means minus x plus 2 should be greater than or equal to 0. It should not be negative. So it should be greater than or equal to 0. So what does it say? x less than or equal to 2. And here you can see. See, actually domain for a function is what? The first set means for which the function is being defined. So, you can see here, if I'll say f is from some x to y here, so you have to find it out x, the set x. That will be your domain here. So, first constant is minus x plus 2 should be getting into 0. And you can say this denominator should not be 0. So, not be 0 means x minus 3 into x plus 5 should not be 0. If it is 0, you can say it is undefined, like 
something upon zero. It is. So what does it say? You think so not be equal to x. So not be equal to three, and x should not be equal to minus five. So we have actually here three conditions: x less than equal to two, x not equal to three, and x not equal to minus five. So what will be your domain? Domain for f x. What will be your domain? So you can see here. Let us say this is your real line. So mod. Let us say it is zero. So whatever constants you have got, x less than equal to two. Let us say this is mod one, two. So what you are saying? X should be less than equal to two. X should be less than equal to two means all these regions from minus infinity to two. This is your x is equal to two point. Now x should not be equal to three. Three is somewhere here. So already this is discarded. X not equal to minus five. Somewhere we have said this is zero. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Somewhere minus five. So you are saying x should not be equal to minus five. So just take all those three conditions together, and you can say minus infinity to minus five. See, x should not be equal to minus five. That's why I am using open interval, and then union so minus five to two. Here I am using closed interval because you can say you are saying x should be less than or equal to two. So x might be equal to two also. So this is our domain for x. So how to find the domain? First thing you should just define what are the expressions here. Those expressions are defined in some special cases like here under root. Similarly, if some log log of some one plus x two plus x something is there log of f x type of thing so you should know log f x is defined for what so if it is in denominator that should not be equal to zero so some constants you have to put and find out the domain so this is some brief about set relations and functions now we'll come to our point limit limit of a single variable problem so uh, the definition is like a real number l is said to be the limit of a function y is equal to f x or say f x at x is equal to a if f x approaches to l as x approaches to a. This is being written as generally limit x goes to a of f x is equal to l. What does it mean? See if if, let us say this is your function y is equal to fx. This is the graph of y is equal to fx. And we have to discuss at x is equal to a. x is equal to a is your point where we have to discuss the limit. What it says the function fx goes to some L if x goes to a. x goes to a means what? See, we have only real line here real line in a sense we have minus infinity to plus infinity here is your point x is equal to a so x is approaching a so how many ways are here to approach a see you can approach a from this side or this there are only two ways to approach x is equal to a because we are studying function of single variables. So we can think of a real line only. So on a real line, there are only two directions where we can approach for a point. So one is this one, means from its left hand side. Second one is this, which is from its right hand side. So if we represent these directions in mathematics, what we can say? One is almost a minus something. I can say h is very, very small. Very, very small positive quantity. Or 
generally say h greater than zero very small quantity because we have to approach towards x is equal to a so there are only two possible directions for us here so one is just subtracts little bit almost 0.00002 let us say 0001 so that is left of it left side of it second one is from right hand side you can approach to x equal to a which it will be of the type a plus h again h is very very small quantity we are using this h just to represent our direction so first i am explaining x approaches a what does it mean so x approaches a means there are two directions for us to approach x equal to a one is left side another one is from right side of x equal to a so for mathematical representation we have just used for left side a minus h and for right side we have just used a plus h why i am explaining this because if we we'll come to the definition of limit here definition starts with approaching only so x approaches to a there are two ways similarly we have to see how fx approach how fx is approaching so x equal to a is a fixed point here then we have to start from its left and right so there are two ways to approach x equal to a for both the ways we have to see how fx is approaching let us say for x equal to a minus h that is left side let us say for x equal to a minus h how fx is approaching fx means its value like if i say an example y is equal to fx equal to something like we took 2x plus 1 so for x equal to 5 it will be 5 into 2 plus 1 that is 11 something for 5 minus h if you have to think means something we have subtracted from 5 so again 2 into 5 minus s plus 1 so that we can think of so for x is equal to a minus h how fx is approaching that you have to find it out means what is the function's value again for the second option which is a plus h how fx is approaching let us say here fx has come as l1 fx has come as l2 here and both are different means l1 is not equal to l2 then what we will say here definition says fx approaches a l means whatever ways are there for approaching x equal to a fx should approach a single real number l but if we are saying that fx has approached l1 from left and fx has approached l2 from its right then we will say limit does not exist both should be equal so here concept of left hand limit and right hand limit comes why only two because for a single variable problem we have only two directions to approach a point x equal to a so due to this only we used to study left hand limit left hand limit means this one so and second one is right hand limit right hand limit means this is x equal to a plus h case so in a single line you can say for any function fx if left hand limit and right hand limit both are same then we can say limit of that function is that number l you can say if left hand limit and right hand limit are not equal not same then you can say limit does not exist so this is the definition for your limit left hand limit and right hand limit generally it is to be like limit x is equal to like x is equal to a so here we can say x is equal to a minus means just we have subtracted something some very small quantity so x is equal to a minus of fx this is your left hand limit in the same way you can write x is equal to a plus for fx 
which is height. So both the expressions you have to calculate. If both are coming equal, then you say limit exists and that is equal to that number. This is the definition. Now I will take some examples. One more thing I would like to explain you. Here, if I have given you an example, f is equal to 2x plus 1 and the point is x equal to 5. So, 5 is a point from its domain. Easily you can say domain for this. If you just think of domain of this function, you can say full real number is its domain. Means 5 is a point from its domain. So, if point x is equal to a is from domain itself, no need to think of left and right because if function is from the domain, you can easily tell what is the function's value. Because if it is in domain, definitely it will be related to a unique element from y as per our definition. So if your point of concern is from your domain, no need to go through all the details, limit or left hand limit, right hand limit. Simply you can say the limit is just put that number and get the function's value. Here I have taken some six examples. We will solve one or two of it and you can try the rest. See if I will take the first example. So first is limit x goes to 2 x square minus 4 upon x square minus 3x plus 2. Here, if you think of this function, so first of all, just check whether x is equal to 2 because we have to discuss the limit at x equal to 2. So again, since we are in a single variable problem, so if this is your real line, minus infinity plus infinity, and this is your point 2, x is equal to 2, then you can approach 2 x equal to 2 from two directions, from left and right. Then by your definition, you should calculate left hand limit, right hand limit. See, if I will compute left hand limit, right hand limit, this will be like limit x goes to 2 minus half of x. This will be equal to limit of x goes to 2 plus half of x. Both the numbers, both the expressions we have to calculate. Let us say L1, L2. If both are same, then you say limit exists and the value is L1 or L2 because both are same. Here, I will say first check the function. What is the domain of that function? Or even in other way, you can say just check whether the point of concern, which is x equal to 2 here, is point from domain or not. If it is from the domain, simply you just put the value and get the limit. So here x equal to 2 if you put here. And what how you compute the domain? Simply your expression is of type something px upon qx, right? So what should be the condition? P. Px can be 0 also. Because here and some only condition is qx should not be equal to 0. So just check it here if you we'll put it 2 so 4 minus 6 plus 2 which comes to 0 so simply you can say x is equal to 2 is not a point from domain what to do first thing is you can just simplify the expressions and then again you check the point of concern whether it is from the domain or not so if i'll solve this expression little further so simply that will be equal to x plus 2 x minus 2 a square minus p square and just factorize this you might have done all these activities in previous classes 10 or 10 plus 2 so how much it will come something like x minus 1 x minus 2 okay so the same fx so you can say x minus 2 and this expressions will be cancelled out so you are left with x plus 2 by x minus 1. Again, for this simplified expression, see, note that this function 
and the simplified function both are not same okay this is different this is different how we can say both are different here domain is different here domain is different that is the one example to say both are different functions here just you check x is equal to 2 here what will be the domain for this simplified expression domain will be just set of real numbers just you have to remove one because x equal to 1 will create a problem here so your point of concern x equal to 2 is inside the domain for this simplified expression so simply you can say <coughs> limit x equal to 2 of fx equal to now you can put the number 2 plus 2 upon 2 minus 1 so 4 this is your answer same way you just go through all the examples and if you are not able to solve you can write us back to c4.com thank you